What's up Weekend Warriors? Jacob Keen here, research analyst at Hensler Financial, trying to show you how to put some bang in your buck on another edition of Casual Finance Friday. It's been nearly a millennia since you had to worry about one of your neighbors hoisting a battering ram and smashing down your door to steal your wheat and iron ore. Or maybe you do worry about this. Maybe you're the guy with the pet gators and a drawbridge who can just tune out now when I start talking moats. You already know what you're doing economic moats. The mechanisms in which businesses fend off their foes are a key topic when we analyze stocks here at Hensler. They come in a number of different forms, which I plan to discuss, but most importantly, they give you a margin of safety, stability, and usually returns well in excess of the cost of capital for your investments. What do I mean by this? Well, businesses need capital to purchase their assets, like servers, trucks, and if you're a startup, probably a ping pong table. This is normally done through a mix of equity and debt and comes at a cost, be it interest payments or share of the business's profits to equity investors. The ability to generate returns on this capital well in excess of this cost of capital can be measured. We call this economic value added. I might get into the math on this in a later video, but for now, let's carry the concept forward. Using this methodology, we can go out and find businesses that have high economic value added. And this is generally a pretty strong indication that the company has a strong moat. The reason this works is because if a business is raising money for far cheaper than the returns they're generating, then other people are gonna want a piece of that pie. They will want to compete, and the thing that stops them from competing is some form of secret sauce, an economic moat. You're rich and you see a company like Uber pop up out of nowhere. You call your other rich buddies and say, how about the same thing with pink mustaches? See Lyft, capitalism at its finest. So beyond somewhat complicated cost of capital calculations, how do we identify and invest in companies with strong moats? The form of a moat can come from size, it's hard to jump over, cost, it's cheaper to dig, intangibles, sharks with freaking laser beams, or switching costs, I couldn't think of a metaphor for this. Let's hash it out. In its simplest form, the economic mode of size is literally what it sounds like. Businesses with size have the ability to spread out their risk. They may have multiple lines of business or multiple locations, so the failure of one aspect of the business will not impair the business as a whole. This can give an edge relative to smaller peers in the same way that a diversified portfolio of investments typically outperforms a single stock portfolio. With growth in size, some companies can also benefit from network effects where like Facebook, Snapchat, or eBay, the service becomes more valuable the more people use it. Bigger companies also have an advantage through economies of scale. It's cheaper for Nabisco to make cookies than your grandmother, but cost advantages do not always come from size. They can come from technology or sourcing. I remember a story of an engineer at UPS that rewrote their routing program to take as many right turns on red as possible. This saved them a ton on gas, reduced costs in idle time, and would be a good example of a technological process advantage. For an example of sourcing, a maple syrup plant in Vermont would have a resource advantage over one in Nevada, which is probably why they aren't making syrup in Nevada. They seem a little more focused on other industries. Continuing with technology, companies can have patents that protect their products, much like the pharmaceutical and software businesses work. This, in a lot of instances, is the purest form of moat. Typically, these products command a premium relative to the competition. Think cancer drugs and iPhones. Patents do expire, however. So when looking towards firms with a technological moat, make sure that their research and development spending is continuing to bolster this advantage. The patents a company holds fall under intangible assets, but intangibles can come in another form, branding. Think of some of the commoditized businesses like apparel and food that are dominated by iconic brands. The swoosh, the golden arches, the polar bear. These, believe it or not, are moats backed by decades of ad spend that make Nike, McDonald's, and Coca-Cola nearly impossible to compete with at scale. Lastly, and perhaps most annoyingly, a business can have high switching costs. Anyone who has dealt with a telecom company like Comcast or AT&T has probably felt this pain, but there are more nuanced ways in which this occurs. Think about the millions of businesses that have run off the Microsoft Office suite for decades and the burden they would experience in trying to switch over to something else like the Google suite. 
All right, well that certainly wasn't an exhaustive list of economic moats, but what I wanted to accomplish was to get you to tap into a new mindset in looking for attractive investments. If you are able to find businesses with strong economic moats, not only do you reduce your risk, but you will likely find returns that are market beating. Think more like a medieval king or queen when you put your money on the line and you'll probably take the throne. This has been Jacob Keen, research analyst at Hinsler Financial, signing off on a very casual Finance Friday. Thank you.